can you run four ohm speakers on an eight ohm amplifier? Willie in Dallas, Texas writes, I've noticed that most products rate wattage at four and eight ohm impedance. And some amps have switches on the amp to change that impedance while others don't. If an amp doesn't have a switch, does it automatically load correctly? A and what about speakers that are six ohms? I believe you can run a six ohm at either eight or four ohm, but would one option generally be better than the other? And does this create problems without the manual switches? Well, Willie, most modern amplifiers do not have switches. I think that's somewhat old and maybe applies more to tube amplifiers than a solid state amplifier because most solid state amplifiers are able to handle loads either four or eight ohms without a problem. So typically years ago, and still today, but mostly years ago, amplifiers were vacuum tube based. And in a vacuum tube amplifier, with few exceptions, you need to have an output transformer that transforms the higher output impedance of a tube output stage to the lower output impedance required to drive a loudspeaker. And when you're using a transformer, you have to match impedances. And that's where that switch comes in. Sometimes they had uh, a, a, a group of taps, different places that you could, jumpers sometimes, taps that you could change, and that was the transformer, the output transformer that you were changing, right? So a transformer, as we may remember from our, our, our talks, is really just two coils of wire with a whole bunch of iron around it. Is there one here nearby somewhere? Well, there are two, yeah, here's one. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. Here's a transformer. Now this, this kind of transformer, we're looking at a big round donut, maybe five inches, six inches uh, in diameter, and maybe a couple of two or three inches wide, and it's very heavy. And what this transformer has is a whole bunch of iron, which is called the core, and around that core, around that iron, are two coils of wire and all the, the various uh, taps and things that come off of it. Looks like it has a lot of wires, but, but essentially they're really in a simple transformer. Oh my God, this thing is heavy. In a simple transformer, we have four wires, two gazinas, two gazatas, okay? And how it works, it's very simple. It's just two coils and one coil receives energy, say from a vacuum tube or from any, you know, the wall socket, whatever you're plugging this coil into. And as long as there's AC, which music is, and the wall voltage is, that energizes the input coil on and off, on and off. And when it does that, it creates a magnetic field, a collapsing <clears throat> or an expanding and then a collapsing magnetic field that goes up and down with the energy. If you take another coil of wire, and hold it close to that first coil of wire, the other coil of wire picks up those magnetic fields and converts that magnetism back into electricity. So electricity in, magnetic field gets bigger and smaller, and that's picked up by the second coil, and then has electricity getting bigger and smaller. So we're transferring energy through a magnetic field by the use of those two coils. So if on one side you had a tube, a vacuum tube output stage, and it was had, had the music on it and going up and down, that went into that coil of wire, and then the other coil of wire on the output side had far fewer turns, okay? And, um, well, the turns ratio actually changes the, the um, voltage difference, so let me think. If you want higher voltage, you're gonna have more turns, lower voltage, you're gonna have fewer turns. Anyway, what they did is they made this transformer. I'm not, I'd have to look at it on a piece of paper to figure out the, the, the differences, but there, there is a difference in the, in the windings ratio that gives you uh, the ability to drive lower impedances and higher impedances, changing the gain of the tube. 
And usually you would do that with a switch or with those, with those taps on the back. Okay. But a modern amplifier, like this one, here's, this is a BHK, what is this one? This is a 300, this is a stereo amplifier. And you can see the binding post on the back, it's still being built. This amplifier has a, 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 the opposite of a vacuum tube. Its output impedance is extremely low, like 0.1 ohms or 0.01 ohms. So here's the rule of thumb to remember. A low output impedance can always drive a higher output impedance. So a 0.1 ohm output impedance amplifier can easily drive a 4 ohm or an 8 ohm or a 6 ohm or a 16 ohm or a 32 ohm, it doesn't matter. As long as the impedance that you're trying to drive is higher than what you're starting with, you're in pretty good shape. Now, that said, some of the, the, the peculiarities of this, and I don't want to get too deep into it because I don't want to confuse the issue, but much of that depends on whether or not you have enough power in this amplifier to drive those low impedances. So the lower the impedance, like 4 ohms, takes twice as much current, the power that is supplied by that transformer, to drive uh, a 4 ohm speaker, it takes twice as much as it does to drive an 8 ohm loudspeaker. And, and a 16 ohm loudspeaker takes half again as much. And a 2 ohm loudspeaker takes even more. So it's, it's a matter of, of impedance and a, the correct amount of power, but the modern day amplifiers do not have that switch and you shouldn't have to worry about it. So in general, if it's a modern amplifier and it has enough power, which most of them do, then you can drive a four, six, or eight ohm speaker without a problem. All right, I hope I haven't befuddled you too much. Thanks, bye. Mm -hmm.